Power right trans on the floor. May your favor, Lord, be upon us. And may you give success to the work of our hands. In the name of the Father, out of the Son, out of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so for ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I failed to do. For my fault, for my fault, for my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary and Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May my God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who through human labor never ceases to perfect and govern the vast world of creation, listen to the supplications of your people, and grant that all men and women may find a world that befits their dignity, joins them more close to one another, and enables them to serve their neighbor. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. On the subject of mutual charity, you have no need for anyone to write you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. Indeed, you did this for all the brothers throughout Macedonia. Nevertheless, we urge you brothers, to progress even more, and aspire to live a tranquil life, to mind your own affairs, and to work with your own hands, as we instructed you, that you may conduct yourselves properly toward outsiders, and not depend on anyone. The word of the Lord. Lord, give success to the work of your hands. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Before the mountains were begotten and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O Lord of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watchman of the night, you make an end of them in their sleep. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all of our days. Let your work be seen by your servants, and your glory be their children. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Alleluia. The 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not worry and say, What are we to eat? What are we to drink? What are we to wear? All the things the pagans your heavenly Father knows that you need them all, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given you besides. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient for a day is its own evil. The Gospel of the Lord. Are you worried about the next day? Are you worried what you're going to eat, what you're going to dress, how this is going to go in your life? In what way what Christ is saying to his disciples is very counterintuitive? Is a man that we at a certain point of time, every single one of us work, we have to be worried, have to be responsible and reasonable about the things. Nothing comes freely, I heard. But Christ tries to tell his disciples this should be not preoccupied in their daily labors and what they do. This shall not be their main concern. But at the same time, this time right now, where we are as a nation, where we are as a world, with extreme fears of what's going to happen, with the people losing their jobs, the jobs being non existent. You know, even recently, okay, the restaurants were closed again for the indoor dining and that and that. How many people of that are going to lose their jobs? Or being put in hold? And I'm not saying that as a great criticism. Because there are fears, there are situations where you don't really know how to respond. But in all of that, let us pray today that this shall happen shall pass quickly, that we might have that seen that everything will go, not the new normal, the old normal. The dignity of labor, the happiness of job well done, will happen if there is a job. We can talk about those packages help and ease the things. But this is not the same. It's not the same to be in a good sense, have a sense of pride of job well done, of putting myself in some of what I do. So I don't have to worry what's going to be the next day. For wages, for the world. Let's pray today for the sanctification of the human labor and once again for having the labor. So that will be normal. The people can go back to work. The will pass. Gathered here as one community, let us place our needs before the Lord. The church, may Christ continue to be a refuge, a strengthen against the evil pressure of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. The political leaders in our nation and our local communities.
May God give them the courage to lead in sincerity and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who struggle with the bondage of sin, may the power of the Lord Jesus deliver them from his grasp and grant them a contrary heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For teachers and catechists beginning a new academic year, may God be their guide as they share the gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may the Lord have mercy on them and gather them to his side for eternity. In a special way, we pray today for Harold and William Kruger. Let us pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, you have shown us the example of how to live by giving us your own son as an example to follow. Hear the prayers we pray before you. We ask for Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for few goodness we have received the wine we offer you, for the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. In a similar way, when Sophie was in he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and read from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who hold the suffering of the Lamb. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks to the God, the Father. Let us pray. Having you made partakers of this table of unity and charity, we so merciful that through the work you have given us a good. We may sustain our life and trust in the love of your kingdom for Christ our Lord. Amen. And have a lovely day, the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, please glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. I call to our angel to defend us in power, the hour of protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May that and we can be humbly pray, and without the grace of the heavenly host, by the power of God, Christ in the hell state, and all the evil spirits, and all of